cervical disc degeneration. Your health and well-being is important to all of us. Today, your health care provider has requested that you watch this brief video. Has your quality of life been affected by your neck pain? Do you notice that your posture has become bent and stooped? Has your work been affected by head and neck pain? Are you unable to be the best you can be because of your neck condition? Over the next few minutes, you'll learn about a specific type of neck condition called cervical disc degeneration, how it occurs, and what you can do to prevent pain and achieve a healthy spine. Cervical spine disc degeneration is a form of arthritis. Discs are located between each vertebra of the spinal column. The cervical spine is considered to be the first seven vertebrae at the top of the spinal column. Those vertebrae extend from the base of the skull to the upper back. The vertebrae are individual bones attached to each other by a multitude of small ligaments and spinal facet joints. The spinal vertebrae surround and protect the spinal cord as it extends from the base of the brain through the spinal canal to the base of the spine. There is one large nerve root extending off of the spinal cord between each vertebra on both the right and left sides. Vertebrae are shaped with holes or foramen to allow the nerve root to freely pass and exit between each vertebra. Every muscle in the upper extremity is supplied by the nerve roots that travel down the arm. There are discs separating each vertebra of the spine. These discs help to separate the vertebrae to allow for movement. They also help create the space between each vertebrae through which each nerve root exits the spinal column. Each disc acts as a shock absorber between vertebrae and adds flexibility to the spine. The cumulative effect of the microtraumas or injuries that occur in our lives can cause the fibers of discs to become weak. These fibers on the outer parts of the disc are called the annular fibers. Inside the center of a disc is material called the nucleus pulposus. Imagine a jelly-filled donut. The annular fibers are the outside and the nucleus pulposus is the filling. Abnormal biomechanics of the vertebrae can cause gradual wear and tear on a disc's annular fibers. As the disc fibers weaken or become injured, a bulge of the disc can develop. In some cases, disc fibers rupture, allowing the nucleus pulposus material to protrude, creating a disc herniation. This protruding disc material can press on a nerve root, which can result in radiating pain, burning, numbness and tingling in the upper back and down the arm. According to an article in Arthritis Research and Therapy, as the body ages, the boundary between the two parts of the disc becomes less obvious, and with increasing age, the nucleus or center of the disc generally becomes more stiff and fibrotic and less gel-like. The loss of this gel-like structure in a disc has a major effect on the disc's load-bearing ability. Injuries to the cervical spine caused by a whiplash, jarring injuries to the neck, misalignment, or repetitive activities can increase the onset of disc degeneration. Most cases of disc degeneration involve poor posture of the head and upper torso. When the head is protruded forward in front of the body, it often results in the cervical spine developing a reversed curve posture. The normal cervical spine should have a 60-degree arc in the neck with the head positioned squarely above the shoulders. If the head juts forward in front of the shoulders, it causes excessive wear and tear on the discs in the neck. Quite often, disc degeneration combined with bone spurs and wear and tear of the vertebrae occur at the same time. These changes in the health of the cervical spine and its discs are forms of osteoarthritis and degenerative disc disease. Once a disc has begun to degenerate, there is no reversing the process. Therefore, it is important to improve the alignment of the cervical vertebrae to help prevent the advancement or worsening of disc degeneration. If you have mild or moderate disc degeneration, it's important to prevent that degeneration from advancing into a severe condition.
Discs function best when they're well hydrated, so drinking plenty of water can maintain disc health. Smoking has shown to be a significant factor in a decrease in disc health, so reducing or quitting smoking is also beneficial. Proper spinal biomechanics can help delay the advancement of the degenerative process. The vertebrae above and below a weakened disc may need chiropractic adjustments to improve the health of the disc and to remove pressure on the joints of the vertebrae as well as possible compression of the nerve roots. If necessary, your doctor or health care provider may also recommend additional treatment to reduce the inflammation surrounding compressed nerve roots. Most cervical spine pain cases can improve with conservative care. Your health care providers have the extensive training needed to diagnose and treat the cause of your pain and to provide the education to help you heal and prevent reoccurrence. It is important for you to work with your doctor of chiropractic to prevent future flare-ups from developing and to stop the advancement of the wear and tear process by improving the alignment of the vertebrae of your neck and back. By receiving proper treatment and by following your doctor's recommendations, most cervical spine conditions can be improved. Your health care team has a star player, you. With you leading the way towards a better state of health, it is important to Keep all appointments. Follow your treatment plan for longer lasting results. Exercise as instructed. Eat properly and follow stretching and ergonomic recommendations. Working together as a team, you and your health care professionals can decrease the likelihood of future problems and prevent degeneration from advancing, decrease relapses or flare-ups, and stop the development of chronic pain syndromes. A better quality of life is the wellness goal to better health. With proper disc care and prevention, you're on the right path to achieving that goal. If you have additional questions about the information presented, please ask your health care provider for assistance.